Ghana listen, officially the Republic of Ghana, is a country located along the Gulf of Guinea and Atlantic Ocean, in the subregion of West Africa. Spanning a landmass of 238,535 square kilometers (92,099 square miles), Ghana is bordered by the Ivory Coast in the west, Burkina Faso in the north, Togo in the east, and the Gulf of Guinea and Atlantic Ocean in the south. Ghana means warrior king. In the Soninke language, the first permanent state in the territory of present-day Ghana dates back to the 11th century. Numerous kingdoms and empires emerged over the centuries, of which the most powerful was the Kingdom of Ashanti. Beginning in the 15th century, numerous European powers contested the area for trading rights, with the British ultimately establishing control of the coast by the late 19th century. Following over a century of native resistance, Ghana's current borders were established by the 1900s as the British Gold Coast. It became independent of the United Kingdom on the 6th of March 1957. Ghana's population of approximately 28 million spans a variety of ethnic, linguistic and religious groups. According to the 2010 census, 71.2% of the population was Christian, 17.6% was Muslim, and 5.2% practiced traditional faiths. Its diverse geography and ecology ranges from coastal savannas to tropical rainforests. Ghana is a unitary constitutional democracy led by a president who is both head of state and head of the government. Ghana's growing economic prosperity and democratic political system have made it a regional power in West Africa. It is a member of the Non-Aligned Movement, the African Union, the Economic Community of West African States ECOAS, Group of 24, G24 and the Commonwealth of Nations. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The etymology of the word Ghana means, warrior king, and was the title accorded to the kings of the medieval Ghana Empire in West Africa, but the empire was further north than the modern country of Ghana, in the region of Guinea. History Medieval kingdoms Ghana was already recognized as one of the great kingdoms in Bilard el Sudan by the 9th century. Ghana was inhabited in the Middle Ages and the Age of Discovery by a number of ancient, predominantly Akan kingdoms in the southern and central territories. This included the Ashanti Empire, the Akwamu, the Bonoman, the Denkiera, and the Mankesum Kingdom. Although the area of present day Ghana in West Africa has experienced many population movements, the Akans were firmly settled by the 5th century BC. By the early 11th century, the Akans were firmly established in the Akan state called Bonoman, for which the Brong Ahafo region is named. From the 13th century, Akans emerged from what is believed to have been the Bonoman area to create several Akan states of Ghana, mainly based on gold trading. These states included Bonoman, Brong Ahafo region, Ashanti, Ashanti region, Denkiera, Central region, Mankesum Kingdom, Western region, and Akwamu Eastern region. By the 19th century, the territory of the southern part of Ghana was included in the Kingdom of Ashanti, one of the most influential states in sub-Saharan Africa prior to the onset of colonialism. The Kingdom of Ashanti government operated first as a loose network, and eventually as a centralized kingdom with an advanced, highly specialized bureaucracy centered in the capital city of Kumasi. Prior to Akan contact with Europeans, the Akan Ashanti people created an advanced economy based on principally gold and gold bar commodities then traded with the states of Africa. The earliest known kingdoms to emerge in modern Ghana were the Mole Dagbani states. The Mole de Gomba came on horseback from present-day Burkina Faso under a single leader, Na Gbewaa. 
With their advanced weapons and based on a central authority, they easily invaded and occupied the lands of the local people ruled by the Tendamba land god priests, established themselves as the rulers over the locals, and made Gambaga their capital. The death of Na Gbewaa caused civil war among his children, some of whom broke off and founded separate states including Dagbon, Mampragu, Mossi, Nanumba and Walla. Topic: European contact, 15th century. A can trade with European states began after contact with Portuguese in the 15th century. Early European contact by the Portuguese people, who came to the Gold Coast region in the 15th century to trade and then established the Portuguese Gold Coast, Costa do Ouro, focused on the extensive availability of gold. The Portuguese built a trading lodge at a coastal settlement called Anomansa, the Perpetual Drink, which they renamed Elmina. In 1481, King John II of Portugal commissioned Diogo Dazambuja to build Elmina Castle, which was completed in three years. By 1598, the Dutch had joined the Portuguese in the gold trade, establishing the Dutch Gold Coast Nederlands van Guinea, and building forts at Fort Comenda and Cormancy. In 1617, the Dutch captured the Olnini Castle from the Portuguese, and Axum in 1642 Fort Saint Anthony. .Other European traders had joined in gold trading by the mid-17th century, most notably the Swedes, establishing the Swedish Gold Coast Svenska Goldkusten, and Denmark-Norway, establishing the Danish Gold Coast Dansk Goldkist or Dansk Guinea. Portuguese merchants, impressed with the gold resources in the area, named it Costa do Ouro or Gold Coast. More than 30 forts and castles were built by the Portuguese, Swedish, Dano-Norwegians, Dutch and German merchants, the latter Germans establishing the German Gold Coast Brandenburger Gold Coast or Gro Friedrichsberg. In 1874 Great Britain established control over some parts of the country, assigning these areas the status of British Gold Coast. Many military engagements occurred between the British colonial powers and the various Akan nation-states. The Akan Kingdom of Ashanti defeated the British a few times in the 100-year-long Anglo-Ashanti Wars but eventually lost with the War of the Golden Stool in the early 1900s. Topic: Transition to independence. In 1947, the newly formed United Gold Coast Convention (UGCC) by the Big Six called for self-government within the shortest possible time, following the Gold Coast legislative election, 1946. Kwame Nkrumah was the first Prime Minister of Ghana and President of Ghana and formed the Convention People's Party CPP with the motto, Self-Government Now. Nkrumah won a majority in the Gold Coast Legislative Election, 1951 for the Gold Coast Legislative Assembly in 1952. Nkrumah was appointed leader of the Gold Coast's government business. The Gold Coast region declared independence from the United Kingdom on 6 March 1957 and established the nation of Ghana, on 6 March 1957 at 12 a.m. Nkrumah declared Ghana's establishment and autonomy. On 1 July 1960, following the Ghanaian constitutional referendum, 1960 and Ghanaian presidential election, 1960 Nkrumah declared Ghana as a republic as the first president of Ghana. The 1st of July is now celebrated as Republic Day. At the time of independence, Nkrumah declared, My first objective is to abolish from Ghana poverty, ignorance, and disease. We shall measure our progress by the improvement in the health of our people, by the number of children in school, and by the quality of their education, by the availability of water and electricity in our towns and villages, and by the happiness which our people take in being able to manage their own affairs. The welfare of our people is our chief pride, and it is by this that the government will ask to be judged. 
In 1966, a group of military officers overthrew Nkrumah in a coup d'état and placed Ghana under the authority of the National Liberation Council. The flag of Ghana, consisting of the colors red, gold, green, and a black star, became the new flag in 1957 when Gold Coast gained its name Ghana. It was designed by Theodosia Salome Oko. The red represents the blood that was shed towards independence, the gold represents the industrial minerals wealth of Ghana, the green symbolizes the rich grasslands of Ghana, and the black star is the symbol of the Ghanaian people and African emancipation. Nkrumah was the first African head of state to promote the concept of Pan Africanism, which he had been introduced to during his studies at Lincoln University, Pennsylvania in the United States, at the time time when Marcus Garvey was becoming famous for his Back to Africa movement. Nkrumah merged the teachings of Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King Jr. and the naturalized Ghanaian scholar W. E. B. Du Bois into the formation of 1960s Ghana, Osejifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, as he became known, played an instrumental part in the founding of the Non-Aligned Movement, and in establishing the Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute to teach his ideologies of communism and socialism. His life achievements were recognized by Ghanaians during his centenary birthday celebration, and the day was instituted as a public holiday in Ghana, Founders' Day. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Operation Cold Chop and Aftermath. The government of Nkrumah was subsequently overthrown by a coup by the Ghana Armed Forces, codenamed. Operation Cold Chop. This occurred while Nkrumah was abroad with Zhou Enlai in the People's Republic of China, on a fruitless mission to Hanoi in Vietnam to help end the Vietnam War. The coup took place on 24 February 1966, led by Col. Emmanuel K. Katoka. National Liberation Council NLC formed and chaired by Lieutenant General Joseph A. Ankara, a series of alternating military and civilian governments, often affected by economic instabilities, from 1966 to 1981 ended with the ascension to power of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings of the Provisional National Defense Council PNDC in 1981. These changes resulted in the suspension of the Constitution of Ghana in 1981, and the banning of political parties in Ghana. The economy soon declined, so Rawlings negotiated a structural adjustment plan changing many old economic policies, and economic growth soon recovered during the mid-1980s. A new constitution of Ghana restoring multi-party system politics was promulgated in Ghanaian presidential election, 1992, Rawlings was elected as president of Ghana then, and again in Ghanaian general election, 1996. 21st century Winning the 2000 Ghanaian elections, John Ajikam Kufuor of the New Patriotic Party NPP was sworn into office as President of Ghana on 7 January 2001, and attained the presidency again in the 2004 Ghanaian elections, thus also serving two terms the term limit as President of Ghana and thus marking the first time under the Fourth Republic that power was transferred from one legitimately elected head of state and head of government to another. Kufuor was succeeded to the presidency of the Republic of Ghana by John Atta Mills of the National Democratic Congress NDC following the Ghanaian presidential election, 2008, and John Atta Mills was inaugurated as the third president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana and eleventh president of Ghana on 7 January 2009, prior to John Atta Mills being succeeded as president of Ghana by then Vice President of Ghana John Dramani Mahama on 24 July 2012, following the Ghanaian presidential election, 2012, John Dramani Mahama became president-elect and was inaugurated as the fourth president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana and seventh president of Ghana on 7 January 2013, to serve one term of office of four-year term length as president of Ghana until 7 January 2017, maintaining Ghana's status as a stable democracy, as a result of the Ghanaian presidential election, 2016. 
1916, Nana Akufo Addo became president elect and was inaugurated as the fifth president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana and eighth president of Ghana on 7 January 2017, to serve one term of office of four year term length as president of Ghana, until 7 January 2021. Topic. Historical timeline Topic. Geography and climate Ghana is located on the Gulf of Guinea, only a few degrees north of the equator, therefore giving it a warm climate. Ghana spans an area of 238,535 square kilometers, 92,099 square miles, and has an Atlantic coastline that stretches 560 kilometers, 350 miles on the Gulf of Guinea in Atlantic Ocean to its south. It lies between latitudes 4 degrees 45 in and 11 degrees north and longitudes 1 degree 15 e and 3 degrees 15 w. The prime meridian passes through Ghana, specifically through the industrial port town of Tima. Ghana is geographically closer to the center of the Earth geographical coordinates than any other country, even though the notional center, 0 degrees, 0 degrees, is located in the Atlantic Ocean approximately 614 kilometers, 382 miles off the southeast coast of Ghana on the Gulf of Guinea. Grasslands mixed with south coastal shrublands and forests dominate Ghana, with forest extending northward from the southwest coast of Ghana on the Gulf of Guinea in the Atlantic Ocean 320 km 200 miles and eastward for a maximum of about 270 km 170 miles with the Kingdom of Ashanti or the southern part of Ghana being a primary location for mining of industrial minerals and timber. Ghana encompasses plains, waterfalls, low hills, rivers, Lake Volta, the world's largest artificial lake, Dodi Island and Barbowarzi Island on the South Atlantic Ocean coast of Ghana. The northernmost part of Ghana is Pulmakong and the southernmost part of Ghana is Cape Three Points. The climate of Ghana is tropical and there are two main seasons, the wet season and the dry season. Topic. Government Ghana is a unitary presidential constitutional democracy with a parliamentary multi-party system. Ghana alternated between civilian and military governments until January 1993, when the military government gave way to the Fourth Republic of Ghana after presidential and parliamentary elections in late 1992. The 1992 Constitution of Ghana divides powers among a Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces President of Ghana, Parliament Parliament of Ghana, Cabinet Cabinet of Ghana, Council of State Ghanaian Council of State, and an independent judiciary Judiciary of Ghana. The government of Ghana is elected by universal suffrage after every four years. Nana Akufo Addo won the presidency in the Ghanaian general election held on 7 December 2016, defeating incumbent John Mahama. He was sworn in on 7 January 2017. The 2012 Fragile States Index indicated that Ghana is ranked the 67th least fragile state in the world and the 5th least fragile state in Africa after Mauritius, 2nd Seychelles, 3rd Botswana, and 4th South Africa. Ghana ranked 112th out of 177 countries on the index. Ghana ranked as the 64th least corrupt and politically corrupt country in the world out of all 174 countries ranked and Ghana ranked as the 5th least corrupt and politically corrupt country in Africa out of 53 countries in the 2012 Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. Ghana was ranked 7th in Africa out of 53 countries in the 2012 Ibrahim Index of African Governance. The Ibrahim Index is a comprehensive measure of African government, based on a number of different variables which reflect the success with which governments deliver essential political goods to its citizens. 
Nkrumah was a Ghanaian nationalist leader who led the country from 1957 to 1966. Nkrumah's political journey started when he entered Lincoln University in Pennsylvania in 1935. He graduated with master's degrees from Lincoln University and the University of Pennsylvania. He formed the Convention People's Party. The party initiated a positive action campaign involving non-violent protests, strikes and non-cooperation with the British authorities. Nkrumah was arrested and sentenced to one year imprisonment during this time. In the Gold Coast's February 1951 general election, he was elected to Parliament and released from prison to become leader of government business. He became Prime Minister of the Gold Coast in 1952's leadership was authoritarian but he improved the infrastructure of the country and his Africanization policies created better career opportunities for Ghanaians. He was deposed in a coup in 1966. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Foreign Relations. Since independence, Ghana has been devoted to ideals of non-alignment and is a founding member of the non-aligned movement. Ghana favors international and regional political and economic cooperation, and is an active member of the United Nations and the African Union. Ghana has a strong relationship with the United States. Three recent U.S. presidents, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama made diplomatic trips to Ghana. Many Ghanaian diplomats and politicians hold positions in international organizations, including Ghanaian diplomat and former Secretary General of the United Nations Kofi Annan, International Criminal Court Judge Akua Kuenyehia, and former President Jerry John Rawlings and former President John Ajakam Kufor, who both served as diplomats of the United Nations. In September 2010, Ghana's former President John Atta Mills visited China on an official visit. Mills and China's former president Hu Jintao marked the 50th anniversary of diplomatic ties between the two nations at the Great Hall of the People on the 20th of September 2010. China reciprocated with an official visit in November 2011 by the vice chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress of China, Zhou Tianong, who visited Ghana and met with Ghana's President John Dramani Mahama, the Islamic Republic of Iran, and the sixth President of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, met with the twelfth President of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama, on the 16th of April 2013 to hold discussions with President John Dramani Mahama on strengthening the non aligned movement and also co-chair a bilateral meeting between Ghana and Iran at the Ghanaian Presidential Palace Flagstaff House. The government of Ghana reciprocated with an official state visit on 5 August 2013 by the Vice President of Ghana, Kwesi Amissa Arthur, who met with the Vice President of Iran, Eshak Jahangiri on the basis of autarky and possible bilateral trade at the Islamic Republic of Iran's Presidential Palace, Sadabad Palace. Topic. Law enforcement and police The Ghana Police Service GPS and the Criminal Investigation Department CID are the main law enforcement agencies of the Republic of Ghana, and are responsible for the detection of crime, maintenance of law and order and the maintenance of internal peace and security. The Ghana Police Service has 11 specialized police units including a Militarized Police Rapid Deployment Force RDF and Marine Police Unit MPU. The Ghana Police Service operates in 12 divisions, 10 covering the 10 regions of Ghana, one assigned specifically to the seaport and industrial hub of Tima, and the 12th being the Railways, Ports and Harbours Division. The Ghana Police Services Marine Police Unit and Division handles issues that arise from the country's offshore oil and gas industry, the Ghana Prison Service and the subdivision Borstal Institute for Juveniles administers incarceration in Ghana. Ghana retains and exercises the death penalty for treason, corruption, robbery, piracy, drug trafficking, rape, and homicide. 
27 convicts all men were sentenced to death in Ghana in 2012 and the Ghana Prison Service statistics of the total number of convicts sentenced to death in Ghana as of December 2012 was 162 men and 4 women, with a total prison inmate population of 13,983 convicts as of the 22nd of July 2013. The new Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the United Nations call for the international community to come together to promote the rule of law, support equal access to justice for all, reduce corruption, and develop effective, accountable, and transparent institutions at all levels. <laughs> Ghanaian Drug War and the Narcotic Control Board Ghana is used as a key narcotics industry transshipment point by traffickers, usually from South America as well as some from other African nations. West Africa is completely weak in terms of border control and the big drug cartels from Colombia and Latin America have chosen Africa as a way to reach Europe. There is not a wide or popular knowledge about the narcotics industry and intercepted narcotics within Ghana itself, due to the industry's operations and involvement in the underground economy. The social context within which narcotic trafficking, storage, transportation, and repacking systems exist in Ghana and the state's location along the Gulf of Guinea within the Atlantic Ocean, only a few degrees north of the equator, makes Ghana an attractive country for the narcotics business. The Narcotic Control Board NACOB, has impounded container ships at the Sekondi Naval Base in the Takaradi Harbor. These ships were carrying thousands of kilograms of cocaine, with a street value running into billions of Ghana cedis. However, drug seizures saw a decline in 2011. Drug cartels are using new methods in narcotics production and narcotics exportation to avoid Ghanaian security agencies. Underdeveloped institutions, porous open borders, and the existence of established smuggling organizations contribute to Ghana's position in the narcotics industry. John Atta Mills, president between 2009 and 2012, initiated ongoing efforts to reduce the role of airports in Ghana's drug trade. <laughs> Military. In 1957, the Ghana Armed Forces GAF consisted of its headquarters, support services, three battalions of infantry and a reconnaissance squadron with armoured vehicles. Ghanaian Prime Minister and President Kwame Nkrumah aimed at rapidly expanding the GAF to support the United States of Africa ambitions. Thus in 1961, 4th and 5th Battalions were established, and in 1964 6th Battalion was established, from a parachute airborne unit originally raised in 1963. Today, Ghana is a regional power and regional hegemon. In his book Shake Hands with the Devil, Canadian Forces Commander Romeo Dallaire highly rated the GAF soldiers and military personnel. The military operations and military doctrine of the GAF are conceptualized on the Constitution of Ghana, Ghana's Law on Armed Force Military Strategy, and Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center agreements to which GAF is a testator. GAF military operations are executed under the auspices and imperium of the Ministry of Defense MOD Minister for Defense, although Ghana is relatively peaceful and is often considered to be one of the least violent countries in the region, but Ghana has experienced political violence in the past and 2017 has thus far seen an upward trend in incidents motivated by political grievances. Topic. Administrative divisions Ghana is divided into 10 administrative regions, sub-divided into 275 districts. Topic. Human rights Homosexual acts are prohibited by law in Ghana. Sometimes old women in Ghana are accused of witchcraft, particularly in rural Ghana. 
Issues of witchcraft mainly remain as speculations based on superstitions within families. In some parts of northern Ghana, there exists what is called a witch camp. This is said to house a total of around 1,000 people accused of witchcraft. The Ghanaian government has announced that it intends to close the camps, while women in Ghana are given equal rights under the Constitution of Ghana, disparities in education, employment, and health for women remain prevalent. Economy Key sectors Ghana is an average natural resource enriched country possessing industrial minerals, hydrocarbons and precious metals. It is an emerging designated digital economy with mixed economy hybridization and an emerging market with 8.7% GDP growth in 2012. It has an economic plan target known as the Ghana Vision 2020. This plan envisions Ghana as the first African country to become a developed country between 2020 and 2029 and a newly industrialized country between 2030 and 2039. This excludes fellow group of 24 member and sub-Saharan African country South Africa, which is a newly industrialized country. Ghana's economy also has ties to the Chinese Yuan Renminbi along with Ghana's vast gold reserves. In 2013, the Bank of Ghana began circulating the renminbi throughout Ghanaian state-owned banks and to the Ghana public as hard currency along with the national Ghana CD for second national trade currency. Between 2012 and 2013, 37.9% of rural dwellers were experiencing poverty whereas only 10.6% of urban dwellers were. Urban areas hold greater opportunity for employment, particularly in informal trade, while nearly all of rural poor households participate in the agricultural sector. The state owned Volta River Authority and Ghana National Petroleum Corporation are the two major electricity producers. The Akasombo Dam, built on the Volta River in 1965, along with Bui Dam, Pong Dam, and several other hydroelectric dams provide hydropower. In addition, the government of Ghana has sought to build the second nuclear power plant in Africa. The Ghana Stock Exchange is the fifth largest on continental Africa and third largest in sub-Saharan Africa with a market capitalization of GH 57.2 billion or CN 180.4 billion yen in 2012 with the South Africa JSE Limited as first. The Ghana Stock Exchange GSE was the second best performing stock exchange in sub Saharan Africa in 2013. Ghana also produces high quality cocoa. It is the second largest producer of cocoa globally, and is projected to become the world's largest producer of cocoa in 2015. Ghana is classified as a middle income country. Services account for 50% of GDP, followed by manufacturing 24.1%, extractive industries 5%, and taxes 20.9%. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Manufacturing The Ghana economy is an emerging digital-based mixed economy hybrid with an increasing primary manufacturing and export of digital technology goods along with assembling and exporting automobiles and ships, diverse resource-rich exportation of industrial minerals, agricultural products primarily cocoa, petroleum and natural gas, and industries such as information and communications technology primarily via Ghana's State Digital Technology Corporation RLG Communications. Communications which manufactures tablet computers with smartphones and various consumer electronics. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Petroleum and natural gas production. Ghana produces and exports an abundance of hydrocarbons such as sweet crude oil and natural gas. 
The 100% state-owned filling station company of Ghana, Ghana Oil Company Goyal, is the number one petroleum and gas filling station of Ghana and the 100% state-owned state oil company Ghana National Petroleum Corporation GNPC, oversees hydrocarbon exploration and production of Ghana's entire petroleum and natural gas reserves. Ghana aims to further increase output of oil to 2.2 million barrels cubic meters per day and gas to 34 million cubic meters 1.2 times 10 to the 9 cu feet per day. Ghana's Jubilee oil field which contains up to 3 billion barrels 480 million cubic meters of sweet crude oil was discovered in 2007 among the many other offshore and inland oil fields in Ghana. Ghana is believed to have up to 5 billion barrels, 790 million cubic meters to 7 billion barrels, 1.1 times 109 cubic meters of petroleum in reserves, which is the fifth largest in Africa and the 21st to 25th largest proven reserves in the world. It also has up to 1.7 times 1011 cubic meters, 6 times 10 to the power of 12 cu feet of natural gas in reserves, which is the 6th largest in Africa and the 49th largest natural gas proven reserves in the world. Oil and gas exploration off Ghana's eastern coast on the Gulf of Guinea is ongoing, and the amount of both crude oil and natural gas continues to increase. The government of Ghana has drawn up plans to nationalize Ghana's entire petroleum and natural gas reserves to increase government revenue. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Industrial minerals mining. Known for its industrial minerals, Ghana is the world's seventh largest producer of gold, producing over 102 metric tons of gold and the tenth largest producer of gold in the world in 2012, producing 89 metric tons of gold. Ghana is the second largest producer of gold on the Africa continent behind South Africa. Ghana has the ninth largest reserves, and is the ninth largest producer, of diamonds in the world. Industrial minerals and exports from South Ghana are gold, silver, timber, diamonds, bauxite, and manganese. South Ghana also has great deposits of barite, basalt, clay, dolomite, feldspar, granite, gravel, gypsum, iron ore, kaolin, laterite, limestone, magnesite, marble, mica, phosphates, phosphorus, rocks, salts, sand, sandstone, silver, slate, talc, and uranium that are yet to be fully exploited. The government of Ghana has drawn up plans to nationalize Ghana's entire mining industry to increase government revenues. Topic: <inaudible> Real Estate. The real estate and housing market of Ghana has become an important and strategic economic sector, particularly in the urban centers of South Ghana such as Accra, Kumasi, Sekondi Takaradi and Tima. Kumasi is growing at a faster rate than Accra, and there is less competition in its real estate market. The gross rental income tax of Ghana is withheld at 10%, capital gains are taxed at 15% with a 5% gift tax imposed on the transfer of properties and Ghana's real estate market is divided into three areas, public sector real estate development, emerging private sector real estate development, and private individuals. The activities of these three groups are facilitated by the Ghanaian banks and the primary mortgage market which has demonstrated enormous growth potential. Recent developments in the Ghanaian economy has given birth to a boom in the construction sector, including the housing and public housing sector generating and injecting billions of dollars annually into the Ghanaian economy. The real estate market investment perspective and attraction comes from Ghana's tropical location and robust political stability. An increasing number of the Ghanaian populace are investing in properties and the Ghana government is empowering the private sector in the real estate direction. <laughs> Trade and exports 
In July 2013, International Enterprise Singapore opened its 38th global office in Accra, to develop trade and investment on logistics, oil and gas, aviation, transportation and consumer sectors. Singapore and Ghana also signed four bilateral agreements to promote public sector and private sector collaboration, as Ghana aims to predominantly shift its economic trade partnership to East Asia and Southeast Asia. The Economic Center is IE Singapore's second office in Africa, coming six months after opening in Johannesburg, South Africa in January 2013. Ghana's labor force in 2008 totaled 11.5 million Ghanaian citizens. Tima Harbour is Africa's largest man-made harbour and Takaradi Harbour along with Tima Harbour in Ghana handles goods and exports for Ghana. They are also traffic junctions where goods are transhipped. The Tima Harbour handles the majority of the nation's export cargo and most of the country's chief exports is shipped from Takaradi Harbour. The Takaradi Harbour and Tima Harbour are operated by the state-owned Ghana Ports and Harbours Authority. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Electricity generation sector. Shortages of electricity have led to Dumza persistent, irregular and unpredictable electric power outages, increasing the interest in renewables. Ghana plans to become a major regional exporter of electrical power using oil from the Jubilee oil field. Economic transparency According to Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index of 2013, out of 177 countries, Ghana ranked 63rd with Cuba and Saudi Arabia. Ghana had a score of 46 on a scale where a 0 to 9 score means highly corrupt, and a 90 to 100 score means very clean. This was based on perceived levels of public sector corruption. Previously in 2012, the country ranked 64 and scored 45. Thus, Ghana's public sector scored lower in 2013 than in 2012, according to CPI scores. Local reports have claimed that Ghana loses $4.5 billion annually from nominal gross domestic product nominal GDP growth as a result of economic corruption and economic crime by the incumbent National Democratic Congress NDC government of Ghana led by John Dramani Mahama. It is also said Ghana has lost an additional $2.5 billion from nominal gross domestic product nominal GDP growth between the months of January 2013 to October 2013 through economic corrupt practices under the Mahama administration. The incumbent president is however seen to be fighting corruption by some government members, and a fellow politician of an opposition party, after ordering investigations into scandals. Nonetheless others believe his actions are not sufficient in some cases. John Addo Kufior, son of former President John Adjikam Kufior, and Kojo Annan, son of former Secretary General of the United Nations Kofi Annan, have been named in association with the Panama Papers. Topic: <laughs> Science and Technology. Ghana was the first sub-Saharan African country to launch a cellular mobile network 1992. It was one of the first countries in Africa to be connected to the Internet and to introduce ADSL broadband services. <laughs> <laughs> Space and satellite programs The Ghana Space Science and Technology Center GSSTC and Ghana Space Agency GHSA oversee the space exploration and space programs of Ghana. GSSTC and GHSA work to have a national security observational satellite launched into orbit in 2015. 
The first practical step in its endeavor was a CANSAT launched on 15 May 2013, a space program spearheaded by the All Nations University College in Kofirijua. The CANSAT was deployed 200 meters 660 feet high from a helium-filled balloon and took some aerial images as well as temperature readings. As its next step in advancing space science and satellite technology in the sub-region, an amateur ground station has been designed and built by the university. It has successfully tracked and communicated with several amateur radio satellites in orbit including the International Space Station, receiving slow-scan TV images on 18 and 20 December 2014. The miniaturized Earth observational satellite is to be launched into orbit in 2017. Ghana's annual space exploration expenditure has been 1% of its gross domestic product GDP to support research in science and technology. In 2012, Ghana was elected to chair the Commission on Science and Technology for Sustainable Development in the South (COMSATS). Ghana has a joint effort in space exploration with South Africa's South African National Space Agency (SANSA). Topic: <laughs> Cybernetics and Cyberwarfare. The use of computer technology for teaching and learning began to receive government of Ghana's attention from the late 1990s. The Information and Communications Technology and Education Policy of Ghana requires the use of information and communications technology for teaching and learning at all levels of the education of Ghana system. The Ministry of Education supports institutions in teaching of information and communications technology literacy. Majority of secondary, and some basic schools of Ghana have computer laboratories. Ghana's intention to become the information technology hub of West Africa has led the government of Ghana to enact cyber crime legislation and enhance cyber security practices. Acting on that goal, in 2008 Ghana passed the Electronic Communications Act and the Electronic Transactions Act, which established the legal framework for governing information technology. In November 2011, the Deputy Minister for Communications and Technology announced the development of a national cyber security strategy, aimed at combating cyber crime and securing critical infrastructure. In June 2012, the National Information Technology Agency announced a national computer emergency response team strategy. Designed to coordinate government response to cyber attacks, both internal and external. The agency also established computer emergency response teams for each municipal, metropolitan, and district assembly to improve coordination and information sharing on cyberspace threats. Ghana is ranked second on continental Africa and seventh globally in cyber warfare, cyber terrorism, cyber crime, and internet crime. Topic Health and Biotechnology The Center for Scientific Research into Plant Medicine is an agency of the Ministry of Health that was set up in the 1970s for both R&D and as a practical resource product production and distribution, provision, primarily in areas of biotechnology related to medicinal plants. This includes both herbal medicine and work on more advanced applications. It also has a secondary role as an educational resource for foreign students in health, biotechnology and related fields. Topic: Education. Topic: Overview. Ghanaian education system is divided in three parts, basic education, secondary cycle and tertiary education. Basic education lasts 11 years ages 4 to 15. It is divided into kindergarten 2 years, primary school 2 module of 3 years and junior high 3 years. Junior High School JHS ends with the basic education certificate examination BECE. Once the BECE achieved, the pupil can pursue into secondary cycle. 
Hence, the pupil has the choice between general education assumed by senior high school and vocational education assumed by technical senior high school, technical and vocational institutes, completed by a massive private and informal offer. Senior high school lasts three years and ends on the West African Secondary School Certificate Examination the WASSCE is prerequisite to be enrolled into a university bachelor's degree program. Polytechnics are open to vocational students, from SHS or from TVI. A bachelor's degree usually lasts four years, can be followed by a one- or two-year master's degree, which can be concluded in three years by a PhD. A polytechnic lasts two or three years. Ghana also possesses numerous colleges of education. The Ghanaian education system from kindergarten up to an undergraduate degree level takes 20 years, the academic year usually goes from August to May inclusive. The school year in primary education lasts 40 weeks in primary school and SHS, and 45 weeks in JHS. Enrollment. <inaudible> 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 With over 95% of its children in school, Ghana currently has one of the highest school enrollment rates in all of Africa. The ratio of females to males in the total education system was 0.98, in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign students Ghana's education system annually attracts a large number of foreign students particularly in the university sector. One noted product of the Ghana education system is Robert Mugabe who completed both his elementary school education and high school education at the prestigious Achimota School. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Funding of education. The government largely funds basic education comprising public primary schools and public junior high schools. Senior high schools were subsidized by the government until September 2017-2018 academic year that senior high education became free. At the higher education level, the government funds more than 80% of resources provided to public universities, polytechnics and teacher training colleges. As part of the Free Compulsory Universal Basic Education FCUBE, the government supplies all basic education schools with all their textbooks and other educational supplies like exercise books. Senior high schools are also provided with all their textbook requirement by the government. Private schools acquire their educational material from private suppliers. Topic. Kindergarten and education structure The female and male ages 15 to 24 years literacy rate in Ghana was 81% in 2010, with males at 82%, and females at 80%. Ghanaian children begin their education at the age of 3 or 4 starting from kindergarten, nursery school and preschool, then to elementary school, primary school, high school, junior high school and senior high school, and finally university. The average age at which a Ghanaian child enters primary school is six years. Ghana has a free education six year primary school education system beginning at age six, and, under the educational reforms implemented in 1988 and reformed in 2007, they pass on to a three year junior high school system. At the end of the third year of junior high, there is a mandatory basic education certificate examination. Those continuing must complete the four-year senior high school program which has been changed to three years and take an admission exam to enter any university or tertiary program. 
The Ghanaian education system from nursery school up to an undergraduate degree level takes 20 years. In 2005, Ghana had 12,130 primary schools, 5,450 junior secondary schools, 503 senior secondary schools, 21 public training colleges, 18 technical institutions, two diploma awarding institutions, and six universities. In 2010, there were relatively more fee Females 53.0% than males 40.5% with primary school and JSS junior secondary school JHS junior high school as their highest level of education. Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> Elementary. The Ghanaian Ministry of Education and the Ghanaian National Accreditation Board provide free education at the elementary school, primary school level, and most Ghanaians have relatively easy access to high school education, junior high school and senior high school. These numbers can be contrasted with the single university and handful of secondary and primary schools that existed at the time of independence in 1957. Ghana's spending on education has varied between 28 to 40 percent of its annual budget in the past decade. All teaching is done in English, mostly by qualified Ghanaian educators. The courses taught at the primary or basic school level include English, Ghanaian language and culture, mathematics, environmental studies, social studies, Mandarin and French as an OIF associated member, integrated or general science, pre-vocational skills and pre-technical skills, religious and moral education, and physical activities such as Ghanaian music and dance, and physical education. Topic. High school The senior high-level school curriculum has core subjects and elective subjects of which students must take four the core subjects of English language, mathematics, integrated science including science, agriculture and environmental studies and social studies economics, geography, history and government. High school students also choose four elective subjects from five available programs, agriculture program, general program arts or science option, business program, vocational program and technical program. Apart from most primary and secondary schools which choose the Ghanaian system of schooling, there are also international schools such as the Takaradi International School, Tima International School, Galaxy International School, the Roman Ridge School, Lincoln Community School, Faith Montessori School, American International School, Alpha Beta Christian College, Association International School, New Nation School, SOS Herman Gemina International College, Villac International School, School, Akasombo International School which offers Cambridge O-level certificate, North Lagon Little Campus and International Community School, which offer the International Baccalaureate, Advanced Level General Certificate of Education and the International General Certificate of Secondary Education IGCSE. <laughs> University. There are eight national public universities in Ghana, the University of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, University of Cape Coast, University of Education, University for Development Studies, University of Mines and Technology, University of Professional Studies, Accra, University of Energy and Natural Resources, and University of Health and Allied Sciences. Ghana has a growing number of accredited private universities in including Lancaster University, Ghana, Ghana Technology University College, Ashesi University College, Methodist University College Ghana, Central University College, Accra Institute of Technology, Regent University College of Science and Technology, Valley View University, Catholic University College, Presbyterian University College, and Zenith University College. The oldest university in Ghana, the University of Ghana, was founded in 1948. It had 29,754 students in 2008. 
Its programs in the arts, humanities, business, and the social sciences, as well as medicine, are among the best in the country. Many universities, including Harvard University, Cornell University, and Oxford University, have special study abroad programs with Ghanaian schools and provide their students the opportunity to study abroad at Ghanaian universities. New York University has a campus in Accra. The University of Ghana has seen a shift of its traditionally best students to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Since Ghana's independence, the country has been one of the most educational in sub Saharan Africa. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan has been Chancellor of the University of Ghana since 2008. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the second university to be established in the country, is the premier university of science and technology in Ghana and West Africa. Demographics Ghana is a multi-ethnic country. The largest ethnic group is the Ashanti people. Ghana's territorial area within West Africa was unoccupied and uninhabited by humans until the 10th century BC. By the 10th century AD, the Guans were the first settlers in Ghana long before the other tribes came. Akans had established Bonoman region and were joined by the current settlers and inhabitants by the 16th century. In 2010, the population of Ghana was 72.2% Christian, 24.3% Pentecostal, 18.4% Protestant, 13.1% Catholic and 11.4% other. Approximately 18.6% of the population of Ghana are Muslim, 51% Sunni, 16% Ahmadiyya, and 8% Shia. About 3.4% of the population follow Hinduism. Of these, 98% are indigenous converts. Hinduism in Ghana was popularized by Swami Ghana Nanda Ji, who opened several temples in the nation. The Temple of Lord Shiva in Accra is one of the largest where there are celebrations to Ganesh Chaturthi, Rath Yatra, and other Hindu observations. As of 2014, there are 375,000 registered legal skilled workers permanent residents or foreign workers, students i.e. Ghana card holders inhabitants with an annually 1.5 million transited airport layovers. In its first post-colonial census in 1960, Ghana had a population of 6.7 million. The median age of Ghanaian citizens is 30 years old and the average household size is 3.6 persons. The government of Ghana states that the official language of Ghana is English, and is spoken by 67.1% of the inhabiting population of Ghana. Topic. Population As of 2016, Ghana had a population of 28,206,728. Around 29% of the population is under the age of 15, while persons aged 15 to 64 make up 57.8% of the population. The Ashanti region had the most, Akan 4.7 million in Ashanti, 2.3 million in Brongahafo, 2.2 million in Central, 2.6 million in Eastern, 2.3 million in Western, and 4 million in the seat of government in Greater Accra geographically and legally part of Eastern then administered separately on 23 July 1982. As of 2010, 4.1 million persons reside in the Dagbani territories or Kingdom of Dagbon, 2.4 million in northern, 1 million in Upper East, and 0.7 million in Upper West. As of 2010, 2.1 million persons reside in U Territory Volta. Immigration <inaudible> 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 
Due to the recent legal immigration of skilled workers who possess Ghana cards, there is a small population of Chinese, Malaysian, Indian, Middle Eastern and European nationals. In 2010, the Ghana Immigration Service reported a large number of economic migrants and illegal immigrants inhabiting Ghana, 14.6% or 3.1 million of Ghana's 2010 population, predominantly Nigerians, Burkinabe citizens, Togolese citizens, and Malian citizens. In 1969, under the Ghana Aliens Compliance Order, GACO enacted by the Prime Minister of Ghana Kofi Abrefa Busia, Government of Ghana with BGU border guard unit deported over 3 million aliens and illegal immigrants in three months as they made up 20% of the population at the time. In 2013, there was a mass deportation of illegal minors, more than 4,000 of them Chinese nationals. Topic. Languages There are 11 languages that have the status of government-sponsored languages Ga Four are Akan ethnic languages Asante Twi, Akuapam Twi, Mafons and Nzema Two are Mol Dagbani ethnic languages Dagara, Dagbanli and Hausa language Yu Dangme Guan and Kazam, English is the language of the state and widely used as a lingua franca. Since Ghana is surrounded by French-speaking countries, French is widely taught in schools and universities, as well as a language used for commercial and international economic exchanges. Since 2006, Ghana is an associate member of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, the global organisation that unites French-speaking countries 84 nations on six continents. In 2005, over 350,000 Ghanaian children studied French in schools. Since then, its status has progressively been updated to a mandatory language in every high school. Topic. Religion Ghana is a largely Christian country, although a sizable Muslim minority exists. Traditional indigenous beliefs are also practiced. Topic. Fertility and reproductive health The fertility rate of Ghana declined from 3.99 to 3.28 with 2.78 in urban region and 3.94 in rural region. As of 2010, the maternal mortality rate was 350 deaths, 100,000 live births, and the infant mortality rate was 38.52 deaths, 1,000 live births. According to a 2013 UNICEF report, 4% of women in Ghana have undergone female genital mutilation FGM. The practice has been made illegal in the country. Ghana is also the birth country of anti-FGM campaigner Afua Dorkenu. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Universal health care and health care provision. Ghana has a universal health care system strictly designated for Ghanaian nationals, National Health Insurance Scheme NHIS. Health care is very variable throughout Ghana and in 2012, over 12 million Ghanaian nationals were covered by the National Health Insurance Scheme Ghana NHIS. Urban centers are well served, and contain most of the hospitals, clinics, and pharmacies in Ghana. There are over 200 hospitals in Ghana and Ghana is a destination for medical tourism. In 2010, there were 0.1 physicians per 1,000 people and as of 2011, 0.9 hospital beds per 1,000 people. In 2017, life expectancy at birth had increased to an average of 67 years with males at 64.5 years and females at 69.6 years, and in 2013 infant mortality decreased to 39 per 1,000 live births. 
There was an estimation of 15 physicians and 93 nurses per 100,000 persons in 2010. 5.2% of Ghana's GDP was spent on health in 2010, and all Ghanaian citizens have the right to access primary health care. As of 2012, the HIV AIDS prevalence was estimated at 1.40% among adults aged 15 to 49. Topic: Culture Ghanaian culture is a diverse mixture of the practices and beliefs of many different Ghanaian ethnic groups. The 2010 census reported that the largest ethnic groups are the Akan (47.3%), the Mol Dagbani (16.6%), the Yu percent the Ga Dangme percent the Gurma (5.7), and the Guan (3.7%). The Akan make up a majority of the population in the central 81.7%, western 78.2%, Ashanti 74.2%, Bronga Hafo 58.9% and eastern 51.1% regions. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Food and Drink. Ghanaian cuisine and gastronomy is diverse, and includes an assortment of soups and stews with varied seafoods and most Ghanaian soups are prepared with vegetables, meat, poultry or fish. Fish is important in the Ghanaian diet with tilapia, roasted and fried whitebait, smoked fish and crayfish all being common components of Ghanaian dishes. Banku is a common Ghanaian starchy food made from ground corn maize, and cornmeal-based staples. Dokonu and banku are usually accompanied by some form of fried fish or grilled tilapia and a very spicy condiment made from raw red and green chilies, onions and tomatoes pepper sauce. Banku and tilapia is a combo served in most Ghanaian restaurants. Fufu is the most common exported Ghanaian dish in that it is a delicacy across the African diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> Literature The Ghanaian National Literature Radio Programme and accompanying publication Voices of Ghana was one of the earliest on the African continent. The most prominent Ghanaian authors are novelists, J. E. Casely Hayford, R. E. Kwe Amar and Ni I. E. Kwe Parks, who gained international acclaim with the books, Ethiopia Unbound 1911, The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born 1968, and Tale of the Blue Bird 2009, respectively. In addition to novels, other literature arts such as Ghanaian theatre and poetry have also had a very good development and support at the national level with prominent Ghanaian playwrights and poets Joe de Graft and Afua Sutherland. <laughs> Adinkra During the 13th century, Ghanaians developed the unique art of adinkra printing. Hand-printed and hand-embroidered adinkra clothes were made and used exclusively by the then Ghanaian royalty for devotional ceremonies. Each of the motifs that make up the corpus of adinkra symbolism has a name and meaning derived from a proverb, a historical event, human attitude, ethology, plant life form, or shapes of inanimate and man-made objects. These are graphically rendered in stylized geometric shapes. The meanings of the motifs may be categorized into aesthetics, ethics, human relations, and concepts. The adinkra symbols have a decorative function as tattoos but also represent objects that encapsulate evocative messages that convey traditional wisdom, aspects of life, or the environment. There are many different symbols with distinct meanings, often linked with proverbs. In the words of Antony Appiah, they were one of the means in a pre-literate society for supporting the transmission of a complex and nuanced body of practice and belief. <laughs> Traditional clothing 
Along with the Adinkra cloth Ghanaians use many different cloth fabrics for their traditional attire. The different ethnic groups have their own individual cloth. The most well known is the Kente cloth. Kente is a very important Ghanaian national costume and clothing and these cloths are used to make traditional and modern Ghanaian Kente attire. Different symbols and different colors mean different things. Kente is the most famous of all the Ghanaian cloths. Kente is a ceremonial cloth hand woven on a horizontal treadle loom and strips measuring about 4 inches wide are sewn together into larger pieces of cloths. Cloths come in various colors, sizes and designs and are worn during very important social and religious occasions. In a cultural context, kente is more important than just a cloth and it is a visual representation of history and also a form of written language through weaving. The term kente has its roots in the Akan word nonton which means a basket and the first kente weavers used raffia fibers to weave cloths that looked like kenton a basket, and thus were referred to as kenton entoma, meaning basket cloth. The original Akan name of the cloth was en sajuazo or enwantoma, meaning a cloth hand woven on a loom. However, kente is the most frequently used term today. Topic. Modern clothing Contemporary Ghanaian fashion includes traditional and modern styles and fabrics and has made its way into the African and global fashion scene. The cloth known as African print fabric was created out of Dutch wax textiles. It is believed that in the late 1800s, Dutch ships on their way to Asia stocked with machine made textiles that mimicked Indonesian batik stopped at many West African ports on the way. The fabrics did not do well in Asia. However, in West Africa mainly Ghana, where there was an already established market for cloths and textiles. The client base grew and it was changed to include local and traditional designs, colors and patterns to cater to the taste of the new consumers. Today outside of Africa it is called Inkara, and it has a client base well beyond Ghana and Africa as a whole. It is very popular among Caribbean peoples and African Americans. Celebrities such as Solange Knowles and her sister Beyonce have been seen wearing African print attire. Many designers from countries in North America and Europe are now using African prints and it has gained a global interest. British luxury fashion house Burberry created a collection around Ghanaian styles. American musician Gwen Stefani has repeatedly incorporated African prints into her clothing line and can often be seen wearing it. Internationally acclaimed Ghanaian British designer Oswald Boateng introduced African print suits in his 2012 collection. Topic music and dance The music of Ghana is diverse and varies between different ethnic groups and regions. Ghanaian music incorporates several distinct types of musical instruments such as the talking drum ensembles, akan drum, goje fiddle and koloko lute, court music, including the akan separiwa, the akan atumpan, the ga kapanlogo styles, and log xylophones used in asonko music. The most well-known genres to have come from Ghana are African jazz, which was created by Ghanaian artist Kofi Ghanaba, and its earliest form of secular music, called highlife. Highlife originated in the late 19th century and early 20th century and spread throughout West Africa. In the 1990s a new genre of music was created by the youth incorporating the influences of highlife, afro-reggae, dancehall and hip-hop. This hybrid was called hip life. Ghanaian artists such as Afro Roots singer, activist and songwriter Rocky Darwini, R&B and soul singer Rian Benson and Sarkodie have had international success. In December 2015, Rocky Darwini became the first Ghanaian musician to be nominated for a Grammy Award in the Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album category for his sixth studio album titled Branches of the Same Tree released 31 March 2015. Ghanaian dance is as diverse as its music, and there are traditional dances and different dances for different occasions. 
The most known Ghanaian dances are those for celebrations. These dances include the Adora, Capanlogo, Azonto, Plama, and Bameya. Topic: <laughs> Film. Ghana has a budding and thriving film industry. Ghana's film industry dates as far back as 1948 when the Gold Coast Film Unit was set up in the Information Services Department. Some internationally recognized films have come from Ghana. In 1970, I Told You So was one of the first Ghanaian films to receive international acknowledgement and received great reviews from the New York Times. It was followed by the 1973 Ghanaian and Italian production The African Deal also known as Contrato Carnale, featuring Bahamian-American actor Calvin Lockhart, 1983's Cooker and Toomey, The Road to Accra, a Ghanaian and German production directed by King Ampor, was written about by famous American film critic Vincent Canby. In 1987, Cobra Verde, another Ghanaian and German production directed by Werner Herzog, received international acclamation and in 1988, Heritage Africa won more than 12 film awards. In recent times there have been collaborations between Ghanaian and Nigerian crew and cast and a number of productions turned out. Many Ghanaian films are co-produced with Nollywood, the Nigerian film industry, and some are distributed by Nigerian marketers. Also, Nigerian filmmakers often feature Ghanaian actors and actresses in their movies and Ghanaian filmmakers feature Nigerian actors and actresses in theirs. Nadia Buhari, Yvonne Nelson, Lydia Forson and Jackie Appiah are all popular Ghanaian actresses and Van Vicker and Majid Mitchell both popular Ghanaian actors, have starred in many Nigerian movies. As a result of these collaborations, Western viewers often confuse Ghanaian movies with Nollywood and count their sales as one, however, they are two independent industries that sometimes share Nollywood. In 2009, UNESCO described Nollywood as the second biggest film industry in the world after Bollywood. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Media. The media of Ghana are amongst the most free in Africa. Chapter 12 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana guarantees freedom of the press and independence of the media, while Chapter 2 prohibits censorship. Post-independence, the government and media often had a tense relationship, with private outlets closed during the military governments and strict media laws that prevented criticism of government. Press freedoms were restored in 1992, and after the election in 2000 of John Adjikam Kufuor the tensions between the private media and government decreased. Kufuor supported press freedom and repealed a libel law, but maintained that the media had to act responsibly. The Ghanaian media has been described as one of the most unfettered in Africa, operating with little restriction. The private press often carries criticism of government policy. <laughs> <laughs> Sports Association football or soccer is the most spectated sport in Ghana and the national men's football team is known as the Black Stars, with the under-20 team known as the Black Satellites. Ghana has won the African Cup of Nations four times, the FIFA U-20 World Cup once, and has participated in three consecutive FIFA World Cups dating back to 2006. In the 2010 FIFA World Cup, Ghana became the third African country to reach the quarter-final stage of the World Cup after Cameroon in 1990 and Senegal in 2002. Ghana national U-20 football team, known as the Black Satellites, is considered to be the feeder team for the Ghana national football team. Ghana is the first and only country on the Africa continent to be crowned FIFA U-20 World Cup champions, and two-time runners-up in 1993 and 2001. 
The Ghana national U-17 football team known as the Black Starlets are two-time FIFA U-17 World Cup champions in 1991 and 1995, two-time runners-up in 1993 and 1997. Ghanaian football teams Asante Kotoko SC and Accra Hearts of Oak SC are the fifth and ninth best football teams on the Africa continent and have won a total of five Africa Continental Association Football and Confederation of African Football trophies. Ghanaian football club Asante Kotoko SC has been crowned two time CAF Champions League winners in 1970, 1983, and five time CAF Champions League runners up, and Ghanaian football. Club Accra Hearts of Oak SC has been crowned 2000 CAF Champions League winner and two time CAF Champions League runners up, 2001 CAF Super Cup champions, and 2004 CAF Confederation Cup champions. The International Federation of Football History and Statistics crowned Asante Kotoko SC as the African club of the 20th century. There are several club football teams in Ghana that play in the Ghana Premier League and Division I League, both administered by the Ghana Football Association. Ghana competed in the Winter Olympics in 2010 for the first time. Ghana qualified for the 2010 Winter Olympics, scoring 137.5 International Ski Federation points, within the qualifying range of 120 to 140 points. Ghanaian skier, Kwame Nkrumah Kiampong, nicknamed the Snow Leopard, became the first Ghanaian to take part in the Winter Olympics. At the 2010 Winter Olympics held in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, taking part in the slalom skiing, Ghana finished 47th out of 102 participating nations, of whom 54 finished in the alpine skiing slalom. Kwame Nkrumah Akiampong broke on the international skiing circuit, being the second black African skier to do so. Ghanaian athletes have won a total of four Olympics medals in 13 appearances at the Summer Olympics, three in boxing, and a bronze medal in association football, and thus became the first country on the Africa continent to win a medal at association football. The country has also produced a number of world class boxers, including Azuma Nelson, a three time world champion and considered as Africa's greatest boxer, Nana York and Ardu also a three-time world champion, Ike Kwarty, and Joshua Clotty, Ghana's women's football team won bronze at the Africa Women Cup of Nations 2016 edition in Yaoundé, Cameroon. The team beat South Africa 1-0. Ghana will host the 2023 African Games in Accra. Topic. Cultural heritage and architecture There are two types of Ghanaian traditional construction, the series of adjacent buildings in an enclosure around a common a common and the traditional round huts with grass roof. The round huts with grass roof architecture are situated in the northern regions of Ghana northern, upper east and upper west regions, while the series of adjacent buildings are in the southern regions of Ghana Ashanti, Bronga Hafo, central, eastern, greater Accra and western regions. Ghanaian postmodern architecture and high-tech architecture buildings are predominant in the Ghanaian southern regions, while the Ghanaian heritage sites are most evident by the more than 30 forts and castles built in Ghana. Some of these forts are Fort William and Fort Amsterdam. Ghana has museums that are situated inside castles, and two are situated inside a fort. The Military Museum and the National Museum organize temporary exhibitions. Ghana has museums that show an in depth look at specific Ghanaian regions. There are a number of museums that provide insight into the traditions and history of their own geographical area in Ghana. The Cape Coast Castle Museum and St. George Castle, Elmina Castle Museum offer guided tours. The Museum of Science and Technology provides its visitors with a look into the domain of Ghanaian scientific development, through exhibits of objects of scientific and technological interest. <laughs> National symbols. 
The coat of arms depicts two animals, the tawny eagle Aquila rapax, a very large bird that lives in the savannas and deserts, 35% of Ghana's landmass is desert, 35% is forest, 30% is savanna, and the lion Panthera leo, a big cat, a ceremonial sword, a heraldic castle on a heraldic sea, a cocoa tree and a mine shaft representing the industrial mineral wealth of Ghana, and a five-pointed black star rimmed with gold represents representing the mineral gold wealth of Ghana and the lodestar of the Ghanaian people. It also has the legend freedom and justice. The flag of Ghana consists of three horizontal bands strips of red top, gold middle, and green bottom. The three bands are the same height and width. The middle band bears a five-pointed black star in the center of the gold band. The color red band stands for the blood spilled to achieve the nation's independence. Gold stands for Ghana's industrial mineral wealth, and the color green symbolizes the rich tropical rainforests and natural resources of Ghana. Topic. Tourism In 2011, 1,087,000 tourists visited Ghana. Tourist arrivals to Ghana include South Americans, Asians, Europeans, and North Americans. The attractions and major tourist destinations of Ghana include a warm, tropical climate year round, diverse wildlife, exotic waterfalls such as Kintampo Waterfalls and the largest waterfall in West Africa, WLI Waterfalls, Ghana's coastal palm lined sandy beaches, caves, mountains, rivers, meteorite impact crater, and reservoirs, and lakes such as Lake Bosomtwi or Bosomtwi Meteorite Crater, and the largest man made lake in the world by surf surface area, Lake Volta, dozens of castles and forts, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, nature reserves and national parks. The World Economic Forum statistics in 2010 showed that out of the world's favorite tourist destinations, Ghana was ranked 108th out of 139 countries. The country had moved two places up from the 2009 rankings. In 2011, Forbes magazine, published that Ghana was ranked the 11th most friendly country in the world. The assertion was based on a survey in 2010 of a cross-section of travelers. Of all the African countries that were included in the survey, Ghana ranked highest. Tourism is the fourth highest earner of foreign exchange for the country. In 2017, Ghana ranks as the 43rd most peaceful country in the world. To enter Ghana, it is necessary to have a visa authorized by the government of Ghana. Travelers must apply for this visa at a Ghanaian embassy. This process can take approximately two weeks. By law, visitors entering Ghana must be able to produce a yellow fever vaccination certificate. Topic. See also Index of Ghana-related articles Outline of Ghana